that. So I, I apologize in advance if I have to like stop and take a drink and then battle my sore throat with cold for about an hour. Alright, so growing up, I was definitely a part of a solid Christian home. Um, both my parents were raised in really conservative, traditional Christian homes, and that definitely played into the way that they raised my siblings and I. Every Sunday since I can remember, we went to church uh, as a family, and up closer. Yeah. All right, sorry. So we went to church as a family, and uh, and after church, I went to Sunday school every week. When I got to first grade, I started getting involved with uh, different organizations in church, like the Dads. And um, by sixth or seventh grade, uh, I was pretty much doing the church thing full time, and. Um, it was through these experiences that I gained a knowledge of the Christian faith and, and of the Bible. And, and so I thought I knew what it meant to be a Christian and all the things that you had to do and say to be considered one. But it really wasn't something that I applied to my everyday life. And it definitely wasn't something that I let control my life. Once I got to high school, uh, things really started picking up for me. And I really started to focus on where I stood in the social ladder. I focused on my grades big time, uh, thinking that the better grades I got, the smarter people thought I was, the more people would like me. Athletics was another thing. I started pole vaulting in 6th and 7th grade. By the time I got to high school, I had improved quite a bit, and, and I was focused on making sure that everyone around me, everyone on the track team, knew who was racking up points every meet. And I also started to get involved uh, sophomore and junior year in a lot of clubs and organizations. In high school, running for leadership positions, thinking that the more organizations that I can be president of, the more important people think I am, and then again, the more people like me. It was like I had a checklist in the back of my head uh, that I had to complete in order for people to like me and to be popular, which is really the only thing that mattered. Meanwhile, in my church life, uh, nothing really changed. I was still hitting up, hitting up church every Sunday morning, um, getting involved with youth group at night and doing all the activities, helping out wherever I could. And this fit really, really nicely into the image that I was trying to create. So, because on top of all the clubs and athletics and academics, everyone in high school knew me as a good Christian kid, and everyone knew it. And one thing that I hadn't had all through high school was a girlfriend. Uh, on top of like academics and doing track six months out of the year, helping out on the family farm, keeping a high GPA, I really didn't feel like I had time for it. But I always told myself that if the right girl found, my, found her way in my life, that I would make time. And the summer before my senior year of high school, the girl that I would eventually fall in love with and spend two months or two years of my life with. <laughs> so, two years of my life, but um, she found her way into my life. And uh, I had a long list of expectations for a girl that I was going to date. Um, and this girl met every one of them and then some. And part of the image that I was trying to create for myself, one of those expectations was that she was a Christian. Like going into my senior year, I was pretty confident, maybe cocky is a better word, that, that I had everything going my way. That checklist I had, done. MVP of the drag team, check. Team captain, check. Graduate top of my class, check. Awesome girlfriend, check. <laughs> So I did everything, in my mind, I did everything that I could to make sure everyone around me thought that I had it all together. And this really continued into my freshman year of college here at State. Uh, as soon as I got down here, I started to get involved with a bunch of organizations, became chaplain of my fraternity, started a Bible study. It just avoided all the cardinal sins, you know? I had no premarital sex, didn't do drugs, um, didn't even drink. And then the summer after my freshman year happened. Somehow I had uh, managed to get an internship with Nessie Nutrition back in my hometown, which is really convenient because that's where my girlfriend was. But towards the end of my freshman year, uh, our relationship had kind of start, started to fall apart. Among some other things, I, I hadn't been leading the relationship like a man of God would. Even though I was a Christian and she was a Christian, our faith definitely wasn't the center of our relationship and eventually that, that took its toll. So now I had a job where I was basically by myself um, in the field for 60 to 70 hours a week, and all I could do was think about it. So for the past two years, I had everything together. In 
for the first time in my life, I had a major part of my life taken away and there was nothing I could do about it. For the rest of the summer, I was confused, upset, and pretty bitter to all those people around me because I didn't understand what it felt like to have a big part of your life just ripped away. When I came back down to school that fall, I started to get more involved with crew, um, even joined the Greek Bible study that they started. Uh, but again, I was separating my life from the Christian things that I was involved with. I started dating another girl uh, who called herself a Christian, but definitely didn't live it out at all. Um, it was like I knew that God was there, and I knew that dating this girl was not going to draw me closer to him, but I just conveniently ignored it and continued to do it anyway. This charade that I had been playing continued until the first semester of my sophomore year, and that's when things got real. Um, this girl that I had been casually seeing for the last few months decided that we should make it official and put it up on Facebook. <laughs> and I immediately shot it down, and then I started... <laughs> and I started to think about why. And I realized that this wasn't the girl that I could take home to my parents and my family and be proud of. Because I all along I had been struggling to maintain the image of someone who had it all together and was a strong Christian believer while separating it from certain areas of my life whenever it was convenient. And all of a sudden, a wave of truth hit me. Um, for the past six years of my life, I have been completely, 100% focused on myself and what others thought of me. I had done everything in my power to show people that I was the best at everything I did, and I deserved credit. I had built up the pedestal I was standing upon, and now I was coming crashing down, because for the first time in my life, I was challenged and convicted on the fact that I had been separating my faith from other areas of my life so that I was in control and I was being glorified. Now I had to make a decision. Either blow it off and continue to build the kingdom of Jason, or drop the act and admit that I needed him to be the center of my life. Christ was pounding on my front door saying, this is it, Jason. Are you going to keep playing the game or are you going to be all in for me? He was demanding, not politely asking, to be the center of my life. Because that's what he desired. I was no longer going to departmentalize my life and keep my faith separate from other things that I was doing. I was not going to continue to build myself up in the eyes of others. No more self-gratification of the faith that I had. This was real, and God was starting me to, was calling me to start acting like it. He had convicted me right where I needed most, and there was no denying what his death on the cross meant for me personally. And it didn't mean that I was to be a Christian when it was convenient or use it to influence others' opinions of myself. It was about him and telling others about him for his glory, not my own. It took a while, but I finally began to use all those things that I had been taught when I was younger to show others what it looked like to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And now I can say without a doubt that my identity is found in Jesus Christ and not in the salvation that he offers, and not in my own accomplishments or my achievements. I'll be the first one to admit that I still struggle with sin in my life, and being prideful at times and glorifying myself instead of the Father. But I'm much quicker to realize it now when I've got friends around me who continue to point me in the right direction. Now I realize that it's about God and about his love for us all. And the more that I study the Bible, the more I realize that every one of our stories really connects to someone in the Bible. And for me, it's Paul. Just a minute. In Philippians 3, 5 through 10, it says, I was circumcised when I was eight days old. I'm a pure-blooded citizen of Israel and a member of the tribe of Benjamin, a real Hebrew if there ever was one. I was a member of the Pharisees who demanded the strictest obedience to the Jewish I was so zealous that I harshly persecuted the church, and as for righteousness, I obeyed the law without flaw. I once thought these things were valuable, but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Yes, everything else is worthless, and when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for his sake I have discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage, so that I could gain Christ and become one. 
I no longer count my own righteousness through obeying the law. Rather, I become righteous through faith in Christ. For God's way of making us right with himself depends on faith. I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to suffer with him, sharing his death. So, I'm a strong believer that whatever it is, whether it's dealing with like self-image, like I did, or other things, everyone has something that's separating them from having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And just like Paul said in that passage, whatever is separating you from, from that relationship is garbage. God created us for one reason, and one reason alone, and that's to have a personal relationship with Him. And if you want to know more about that, um, any one of us uh, that haven't seen is me, anybody in the back of the room talks about that, of course. Thanks.